So we have Daryl Matany, um, one of the famous all Matanys, Agri Plant and Haulage. That's it. Yeah, That's there's it. loads of people asking me to get you on. You're big stuff down down the country. Jeez, I don't know. <laughs> How many young lads have sat on the arse of your seats? A few. There's a good few. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say there's a big turnover now, but uh, there's been a few. Over the years, though. Oh, ah, yeah. You're yeah, at it yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, So, Dar, I always go back to the start. Your yeah. family. Yeah. Big family, small family. Big enough family out of six, six, um, four boys and two girls. And what was it like growing up in that house? Busy? Busy, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Farmers? Farming, yeah. Uh, we were milking cows. Kind of started, well, dad's been kind of at higher work. All his life, so. Was um, he a higher work even when you were younger? Oh, geez, yeah, 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 yeah. So you and remember main, main, not enough. Mainly just agri, but yeah, yeah, a higher always, yeah. Yeah. I think he started, like, you know, when he was a teenager, taking churns of milk to the, to the creamery for local farmers and that, yeah. What age is your dad? 74. And still? Th- he thinks he's 24. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the oldest? Uh, in the, the in your family, in the family, Seamus, Seamus was our oldest brother, and he got an education. <laughs> so he didn't. He stayed away from you. Uh, yeah, like he 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 he's got an office job or HR. But in fairness, now he 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 helps. Um, in the summertime now he drives drives tractors and loaders and helps us out in the busy times at the silage and that. Is there much of a age difference between you all? Jesus, I could get in trouble. <laughs> I don't know. I think Seamus is getting close to late 40s or whatever. So. Fuck you, I'm 40. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he feel bad about that? I don't know. I don't know. Seamus, listen. 40 <laughs> is the new 30. Right? That's when everyone said, explores, I, I, their, explores I their sexuality now. <laughs> I, I said late 40s. <laughs> <laughs> That's only a couple of years away from me. But, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, everyone, in fairness, everyone, everyone gets... Uh, Everyone gets pulled in when it's busy. Even the sisters give a hand in the office, and Marie, there she's she's working in a hospital, but she could um she could be called on to bring diesel out to lads in the summertime and bring be- fifteen snack boxes <laughs> to field. <Yeah. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was nearest to you in age? Uh, so I'm the baby. I'm the youngest. Hmm. Then there's Marie. Then there's Marie. Then we have Michal, Sean, and Seamus. And did you were you close growing up? Oh, when we aren't pulling the head off each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's how you define if someone's close when yeah, they grow up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we are, to be fair, yeah. We are, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Did, were you very hands-on on the farm when you were younger? Yeah, yeah. I suppose we all kind of... We all had our own interests and our own qualities, I suppose, really. You know, so we all kind of um, put our own mark on and, and progressed, I suppose, the business as we felt... Tommy Hall would have an interest. You weren't in progressing there. on the business when you were wondering, will I do my homework? Will I go and play with the cows? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, well, did you know when, when you were young and like you've been the youngest, were you in school thinking, oh, maybe I want to do something after school or is it farming, machines, lorries? Like, yeah. when did you start getting the interest? Oh, jeez. Like, I, I got a license and I was driving the tractor to school. Really? Oh, yeah. And I... Holly'd ring and say, does, does a digger to be shifted or does earth to be drawn or does silage to be drawn or a field to be harrowed? And I would drive straight back and wh- hitch up and go. Yeah. I, I remember I remember, I was down in Clebritton. I was playing like underage GA and I had the license just got and I had, it was my first time I'd say taking the tractor to training. And I was just getting out of the tractor and Holly ring to say there was something and I don't know where we, what we were going to do, but that was it. That was the last trading. So have you always been flat out with Agri? Yeah, yeah. Did you finish school? Yeah. yeah. You, you done, did your leaving? Done the leaving, yeah. yeah. Straight into it? Straight into it, yeah. Done the haulage license and uh, I suppose I suppose we never had trucks. We never had trucks. We only got into trucks in 2006. So b- before you were the t- 2006, you were just full time agri stuff. Yeah, or was it busy all year? Yeah, see, I suppose as we came of age, it was either make a living of it all year round, you know, or or, or not. Conti- you know, like it wasn't going to be feasible to run an agricultural business just cutting silage and maybe a bit of slurry or that, you know, to, you know, for maybe three of us to to stay at it full time, you know, so. 
we wouldn't have been at Diggers either in the earlier years. I suppose we got into Diggers back in 96. That was our it. first Digger. 1996, I remember. The year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I suppose it progressed, you know, back way when, when we were young. It was just kind of silage, just slurry. Didn't, bailing was a big thing. You know, we got into bailing. I don't even know, back in... The early nineties, I suppose. It was I would have been young now, but it was it was new to us. Mm. And the diggers, I suppose, we got into in zero six, and that progressed. And we would have got into tractors and dump trailers and low loaders and tractors like we had. Mm. And uh, I suppose that got so busy then. I always had a keen interest in the trucks, and we were transporting, I suppose. And it was just getting too much work for the tractors, you know. We were doing Larry work with tractors as yeah. well, you know, shifting diggers with tractors. The weight and the brakes weren't matching. Sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and just the distance and that, so. And you were getting a horn for the Larry. I was getting a horn for the Larry, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I suppose we bought a new tipper truck in 06, and we bought a second-hand Arctic in 06, and we bought a brand-new low loader and a brand-new tipper trailer for that Arctic in 06, and I kind of started from there. And, uh, I suppose we were, we didn't have a haulage license because we weren't working for ourselves. We were we were just or we weren't we, you working. Were working for yourselves. We you were working for yeah. ourselves. It wasn't her reward. So then it came to a stage where where we were weren't we gonna you know take the next jump? So I done the haulage license. Then it I was guess I done it. Uh, I done there was when we went looking into it. There was like a, a three month course or something. You know you could do it, and I I'm not great to. Hold information. Yes. <laughs> so I said, geez, there no hope I'm going to pass this yoke with, uh, you know, doing two nights a week for three months. Yeah. You know, I'll have it all forgotten because I definitely won't be studying it anyway. So um, the next option was an intensive course. So we've been looking into that and uh, it was Mulligan's. Uh, they're based in Dublin and they do a lot of the CPC courses and hazardous training and that. And uh, they kind of do these intensive courses a couple of times a year. So I said, uh, we've actually just ran course. So it happens over two weeks. So you have week one and week two, and then you have the exam. So they said, we actually we actually done week one. This was like the second week of December. So we actually done week one in week one of December in Cork, and we're doing week two, the second week of January. So, but we're actually doing week one in Dublin, the first week of January. Mm. So once we had the... Um, New Year over us, got a lift to Dublin from some friend that was going back to college or that, and got dropped off at the hotel and gave the week, gave, us, gave the week doing the course, got the train home, got a buddy to take me in Cork, and I actually had bought a new car, a new uh, Opel Astra car at the time. Is it, uh, what age did you? I was 20, well, I was just, tur- just about to turn 21 because my birthday is the 27th of January. So I done week one in Dublin, done week two in Cork the following week, and the third Friday of that month, I done the exam, and I had my twenty first birthday on the Saturday. Passed it. I passed it, yeah. And because you wanted to get the lorries first, was it everyone in your family? There, you can fuck off and do the holiday license. <laughs> we're not doing. We're we're busy fucking doing farm work here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd say there was no, there was no real debate in that. And Did I, you feel pressure having to do it? Were you nervous? Ah, sure, I'm fucking nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> we're, wait, we're all friends here. <laughs> we're all friends here. Ah, uh, yeah. I uh, look, you know, I suppose because it was kind of so intense, you know, and I was so, I suppose, young and eager and interested, and I was a little bit of pressure as well. You know, I really. I really did take it in, I suppose, you know, mm. and it was all fresh in my head then for the following week, I suppose. It was the best way for me to, I suppose, handle it and get 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 it done, you know. So, um, yeah, I passed it anyway. And when you make decisions for buying stuff for who's going to do something, do you have to do it as a family together, you and your brothers? Ah, yeah. Look, I suppose, uh, I suppose Larry's kind of my gig and, and, and the agree would, I suppose we share like definitely we talk with each other and what's the best option and what's feasible and what what works best for us and I suppose what the drivers want and you know um 
but definitely we you know we we definitely chat a lot between us you work like hours uh, hours yeah you work yeah. like hours like you work yeah. hard uh, yeah. yeah so Suppose when we you were you don't know any different how did your was your father hard on you like no he, no how, i wouldn't say so like i gave out to us like <laughs> he still gives out to us but uh um I suppose we had we definitely had an appreciation for money because we worked for it, you know. Mm. We definitely didn't get handed money, you know, like geez, I'd say I had a direct debit into my account at sixteen, but like it it didn't go in if if it wasn't if I didn't do anything, you know, but we were working every evening and we were working every Saturday and So you were probably you know, working when you were kids all the time. Can you remember yeah. the first time that your mother or father went, Right, I'll tell you what, we're gonna give you this much money but you have to do this much work. It sure wasn't even that. Like I remember, I remember when I before I ever was ever driven. And my job was like you know, and not that I was ever told really to do much, but it, you know, I we must we all kind of brought it on ourselves. We didn't know any different or better, but you know, dipping every tractor for oil and checking every tractor for water. The gear probably wouldn't have been as good then either, and probably took a little bit more nursing in that. But you know lads could be away at Bales and they were going to be going at silage after dinner and I was in the yard getting the silage gear ready for t- the evening you know mm. or uh, after lunch which is I'll never forget um, the poor guy died since but um, um, he was our postman at the time Mickey and he was a cool dude now and he would come and he would freaking help me get tractors ready and he was driving tractors around the place and I was washing them and everyone waiting for their post <laughs> everyone waiting for their post <laughs> there wasn't as much fucking online shopping that day. <laughs> <laughs> and he could give an hour and a half in the air you know playing with me with the tractors like and we were playing with big tractors <laughs> at the time and uh, but yeah I, I, you know and we were sweeping sheds and we were you know we, were, we uh, I suppose it was always drilled into us we were always you know tried to be tidy you know, mm. and the yard was always, we always tried to keep the yard tidy. We were always sweeping the sheds and, you know, lining up the tractors and lining up the trailers and everything in our yard has its own parking space. And some fellas can't figure it out like that. <laughs> <laughs> were your friends <laughs> growing up into the same kind of things as you? Definitely, yeah. Uh, like, those lads going to school with me, they were driving for us, you know, mm. and were working for us. So. so you enjoyed work when you were there? Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez, we definitely love it. Ah, uh, yeah, we definitely do, yeah. No. Is it hard to get away from the grass? Do you know the way everyone gets addicted to the grass? Yeah. You know De- the silage? Yeah. Do you still have a horn for it? Big time, yeah. So silly. when you were driving the lorry, the lorry's not fucking easy. Yeah. Right? It's monotonous and yeah. it can be fucking hard work. When you're doing that and everyone's having the crack, <laughs> right? They're having the late nights, they're getting fed in houses. Do you still get fed in houses? Do people still feed uh, the shy? Yeah, we do, yeah. Is that died down a bit? A bit. It uh, definitely has, yeah. Yeah. Definitely has, but um, look, we know we know our customers, and we know the customers that are, are f- do make the food, and we know the customers that don't. And some, if we don't, we'd ask, and if they don't, there's no problem, and we'll organize mm-hmm. it. But the last thing we want is to be in a place, and geez, are they going to feed us again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to be asked to do what? Yeah, and then it's half a state, and everyone's getting crass. Yeah, <laughs> so we don't want to be in that position because look, lads work hard, and. You know, there's there's too much at risk too. You know, you're, you're dealing with serious equipment, and you know, the last thing you want to, you know, be hungry and have a headache or be sick of it. Or, you know, so look, we do try your best. You know, going back to the sister Maraid or Ma'am, Ma'am could make a heap of sandwiches or whatever, and Maraid could bring them out to the field, depending where we'd be or, as I say, fifteen snack boxes mm. or whatever. You know, geez, if they had snack boxes last night, they won't want snack boxes tonight. So yeah. <laughs> we'll have to. What's to the earliest memory you have of the silage and agricultural work falling asleep on the silage officer it was a hest and it was like I don't even remember the number of it but the wheels were the small wheels in the front of the hamster I remember that hamster we bought a 7 7 25 feet agri after that and she was the mutts mutts and it was kind of from then on then it was new class we bought a new class kind of every Three, four years. Can you remember the first time you went big bucks? New. Yeah, I remember the first class silage harvester. Yeah, yeah. 
It, oh, what's that? 96 as well, it's a, the new Robert R. Digger came in 96. And we got a new Massey in 96. Do you know, but uh, definitely I remember. Massey is supposed to be classy, but I heard Zetter's Zetter better. Is better yeah. <laughs> and would you believe Tony started with Zetter? Really? Yeah, way back. With crystals. Crystals. I remember, I remember them. Eight yeah. not livings. I drove eight not livings and 12 not livings when I was small. They were the Oaks we were getting ready around the hours. Wait, we we had them <coughs> crystals. Yeah. yeah. Um, Leylands. Oh, jeez, we not Leyland. Yeah, oh, we, there was a Belarus knocking around the dome <laughs> as well. And I can tell you, so I could never get a gear in it. Don't ever. Talk, don't be talking dirty now. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> they were bad. <laughs> well, we wanted to tie in stuff to the G now. Jesus. So, could you give us a rough rundown on your busiest time is obviously the summer. Mm. Right, so in Tony O'Matney's setup, which is your father's name, and that's mm-hmm. what the company is still called. Yeah. What's a general day on all sides of the business? Like what's going on on the, on the busiest of days? How many? <laughs> like there's 11 trucks there and there's 13 tractors. And there's five or six excavators and there's different loaders and telehandlers and that. So, you know, we probably have two or three excavator drivers full time. And then there's like two or three excavators that would be out in self drive fire. And they get shifted around and we have cherry pickers, you know, for you want to go paint your house. Mm. We won't be doing your deal because you're too far away. Fuck it anyway. Oh, you don't have a house. I was just going to say, yes. I don't have a house. <laughs> I don't need a cherry picker for it. All I need is a step ladder or maybe just a big box, right? <laughs> but I was there. Two, the ca- two there milk was, crates. There's a tree and the cat's getting up and fairly often. And I was there thinking I could ring you if something happened. But no, yeah. no not, not when you're going to charge a shite on me now for coming up with the big fucking 750. <laughs> so that's that. Um, so who looks after all that? Like, who tells everyone what they're doing? Sure, me and Michal, I suppose, would kind of orchestrate a lot of the work. Sean, my other brother, so we will say there's three brothers and dad and involved, I suppose, heavily in the business. And Sean, um, Jesus, Sean is a gifted man. <laughs> he fixes everything. Yeah. So he 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 does all the fixing and he does all of the bailing. Bailing is his is his baby. So we get a new fusion baler nearly every year for him. Quite. Cool. Yeah. So like he he bails like fifty. Hey, you're spite rotten. Just putting it out there. Yeah. <laughs> so but he bails like fifteen, sixteen thousand bales a year. Is that a lot? That is a lot. That, that sounds is, like a lot. That's a lot, yeah. So with Can one you with, far with, with one baler. Um. So if you're familiar with Cork, I suppose. McCroom to Cork City, back to Kinsale, um, west of Clannacilty, you know. Mm. Um, there's kind of... Is your father still hands-on? Mental, yeah. He thinks he's 22, like. When, can you remember the time when he s- took a step back and said, right, I trust you to work away. I'll leave it at you. That'll never. Happen. That'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> was there never a moment where he went listen now boys you're spending way too much money there's too much going on uh, here there's he, too many plates in the air he nearly is the final say always you does he you'd have to talk him into it I don't know but look he, I suppose if there's something I want to buy or something Holly wants to buy or something we think like obviously we think we we're playing with big ties or whatever but you know there will be still nothing bought without you know it has to make sense look has to make financial sense and has to work for the business and it has to justify itself I suppose do you know what I mean so I don't feel anything was bought you know that wasn't necessary do you know have um, you a good work life balance jeez I don't think my wife would think that <laughs> no I don't think so it's kind of um, it goes with the territory in the stuff yeah. that you do they're long hours we, we definitely have patient wives my three brother, me and my two brothers yeah Definitely, yeah. we're very patient boys. Should I say behind every good man is a lucky woman? <laughs> 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 I'm only messing with <laughs> no, What's a nice what's a typical day for you? Um, so I suppose there's there's four or five arctics out every day, and maybe two rigids and that. And um, look, we're brilliant lads. We're very good lads, and they're very familiar with what we do and. <coughs> I'd like to think we don't 
Like if you told me go to Dublin, and this is your job now, and drive to Dublin five days a week and go from there to there, I couldn't do it. Like you'd like change. Yeah, I, I would. There's no way, and I, you know, there's no way I'd expect a driver of ours to do it because you'd go simple. And there's lads doing it every day, and I hats off to them, you know. But uh, I love the variety. You know, and you've good days and bad days, but I do love, and I don't. I don't think there's any truck driver will disagree. The variety, like uh, you look, I love it, and anyway. look, more people probably pref- like the, the repetition, and they know what they're doing, mm. and they know exactly when, like, uh, when you say work life balance, I suppose it's hard to get the work life balance because you never know when you're home, because mm. you never how long the day de- know how long the day is gonna be. But I do love the the variety, you know. Shifting big diggers or silage hamsters the day last day you met me, yeah, do you know, or you're pulling the tankers or you're doing tipper work and you know it keeps it interesting, I suppose. Do you know what's the hardest machine to get a driver for? I don't know. I suppose, like, like obviously, like every industry, there's plenty of tractor yeah. jockeys and plenty of lorry drivers but there must be some parts of agriculture that you go oh I can't get a young lad to do that I need experience for this yeah sure I suppose like the agri has moved on so much you know like we have we have and there's thousands of them in the country but we have a fertilizer spreader like and there's no way I could follow it anyway like lads have an app on their phone and they can it's, the yolks got weight cells and they put in the fertilizer and they can weigh it and they can they're basically calibrating the machine on their phone and they're off down the field, you know. Yeah. Like, every fella's drawn, you know, and uh, I don't get into that. I don't, I'm not really bothered about learning it because it's not something I'll be doing because we're at the track trucks or whatever. But, um, sure, I don't know. Like, every, every job is so kind of complex now. Like, does not, you know, it's great to say. Technology tra- tra- and everything. But even trailer jockeys, like tra- the sailors trailers are massive, like, you know, and didn't every fella you can just leave off of one either, do you know what I mean? To be fair, the lads that are drawing are. Or with us. Weapons, the ox. Yeah. How yeah. big are yours? They're like, they're 27 foot super cubes. They're 25 on the floor, I think, and 27 on, on, on the tops that are longer on top. They step out in the, in the front, but, um, you know, you can't very well leave <laughs> anyone off for them either, you know? Mm. But, um, yeah, just definitely the silage like is is a serious buzz, I suppose. And and we have a second little harvester. It's a zero zero three class silage harvester, an older one. So that's that's my toy. Well, whenever so, you get so behind, does that get called out like yeah, Robin yeah, for Batman? Yeah, yeah. But the problem is serious orchestration in it because you know you no, know, it, it would just work very well there. No kind of three weekends in a row through the busiest part of the silage. So it's going to say, right, we'll, we'll pull out the second machine now, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, or sun, Saturday, Sunday, and the bank holiday, Monday. But you need you need extra tractor drivers, and you need good ex- extra good tractor drivers, because you can't pull in with, what we'll say, the B team, yeah, and make a ball to the job. And that Tony's been making a good job of, and, and our loader guy, who's a genius, um, Donal, you know, you can't come in with rookies, you know. Yeah. So it's shames the the guy in the suit. Um, my oldest brother, he he comes and he drives the second harvester. And good man, shames. Or the second loader. Fair play, yeah. And I'll drive the harvester when the lorries are maybe the equator, and 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 the lads of the, the other truck driving lads will 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 come in and draw. So we have a good B team as well. Have you ever went to Australia? Yeah. I went to New Zealand to do a silage season. Uh, myself and four buddies, or three buddies and myself, four of us. And uh, so we you hadn't enough during the winter, he- summer uh, here, to stay the fuck off there yeah, and yeah, go again. 2011. What was that like? That was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was savage. No, I Which different? Obviously, the size of things are worse. New, that same. New Zealand, I really liked New Zealand, and I'd be very much a home bird. And I suppose if I was to be anywhere else in the world, it would be New Zealand. But I still wouldn't be anywhere else. I'd say only home. But definitely it's the closest thing to Ireland without being Ireland, I would say, on a bigger scale. Is it very like Ireland? 
I would say so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the countryside and that, probably a bit hillier and that, but um, that's nice. New Zealand's nice. Yeah. So, but we only gave, like, I only gave probably two months there. Did you learn anything? Did you go home with any nuggets of knowledge and go, this is what we're going to do now? I definitely did, yeah. And look, you know, we went to a contractor that had like 50 tractors, you know, and we had probably five at the time, you know. And we had one side of Charleston and they had five of them, I'd say, you know. So it was good to see how they managed staff and how they managed paperwork and how they managed recording work, you know, which is supposed, you know, helped us perfect try to perfect a bit better anyway what we do, you know. Um definitely learn from it, yeah. Definitely learn from it. And um it was kind of a really good season and the season kinda of went fast. So the see the season ended fast. So it, like we went out in October, so we had October and November there. And then they said, Look, we've nothing for you now, so come back to the end of January for the maze. Hmm. So that was two months, so we said, Fuck, we're not gonna hang around for two months, so so we bought a Subaru Legacy. Out there? Yeah. And drove to Shai for three months. We, no, we, we <laughs> <laughs> it didn't last three months. <laughs> <laughs> Did you crash it? No, we did not. Um, I don't believe you. <laughs> no fucking way you didn't crash that or hit it in we, three we months. Left it, we left it with a buddy of ours and a buddy from Cork. So we bought it for $800, which was 400 euros at the time, I think. It was cheap. Know, which was 100 euros, man. And we drove it, I'd say, to every town in New Zealand. And we spent the night in nearly every town we passed through. And if we have fierce crack, we stayed there a second night. <laughs> and it sounds good crack, doesn't it? Right. It was it was a it was an estate, so we had a little Irish flag across the back window full of suitcases and it was a grand comfortable yeah, no, in fairness. We We're did have an incident with it right. Steve was driving and the latch opened in the bonnet <laughs> the day we collected it. And it opened and it went back and it burst the windscreen. So we But you were driving? No, Steve, another guy was driving, I was in the passenger seat. So we got a windscreen. This was the day before we kinda headed off to go travelling. And uh we got in the windscreen and we drove on. <laughs> How did you meet your wife when you're always working? Can I she can I make a guess? I'm gonna be wrong, but I want to guess this. I mm-hmm. want this to be what happened. Mm-hmm. So you went to cut silage in this farm. <laughs> <laughs> and you went in to get the dinner and then this this young one puts the food on the table and you went where are you going <laughs> what's going did you see me tractor <laughs> <laughs> her dad's a bit her builder oh okay, <laughs> I was wrong so how did you uh, meet the wife I suppose we were in the same circle of friends so we were friends for a long time I suppose before before we got together yeah so yeah I don't know we just met up in Bandon one night so you're a married man. Married man. Um, we all know that story. Can you remember the time for your first time you ever fingered anyone? <laughs> 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 I'm only joking. <laughs> Loads of people always uh, worry about me when I ask personal questions like that. <laughs> but um, when did you get married? How long ago? Ah, uh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> 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 well, look, five, hey. five years ago, November. No, every, take number forty-five. Every, every, every man. Always gets worried because you see, we're so busy trying to look <laughs> after our women yeah. that we can't think that about the days and the times. Yeah. It's not that we don't love you, yeah. it's just that we're too busy trying to keep the wolf away from the door. <laughs> That's I'm, all. I'm able to tell you when we bought our first thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. 1980. <laughs> <laughs> the number on diggers there, years ago. But you wouldn't know how long yeah. you're married. Five years, I think, this, this November. So you're all married, all married. And uh, Christmas is busy in your house. Do you all go back to the home place to mommy and daddy? We kind of take turns because we might stay in, we might go to, you know, we're invited to 15 places, but we might, um, we might stay in Katrina's place for Christmas dinner or Christmas dinner doesn't really happen in, in the, in dad's house, dad, mom and dad's house, we'd say, because. I suppose all the brothers and sisters have the kids and that, so... It's handier for them to go to the other houses. They'll come to one of their houses, so they 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 have a peak of... They'll come to our house one year, or they'll come to Molly's house another year, or Sean's house. When you were chaps... Yeah. And you were writing your letters to Santa. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, you and the boys are downstairs and you're told to write your letters. Yeah. 
Where are you getting tractors? Jeez, I remember. Had you all the little tractors, the uh, Britain's uh, tractors? And sure, we had, I suppose, yeah. Jeez, there was one year I tried, uh, I, I, I wrote a centre for a, a, one of them battery electric Jeep yokes. It didn't come anyway. Oh, <laughs> Santi. <laughs> Fucking bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> and did you even know until th- Christmas morning? No, no, no. Walk down the stairs. No Jeep. No Jeep. No Jeep. Tony's in the corner laughing, going, <laughs> 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 You were a ball by this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the um, most harm you ever done? <laughs> in uh, Like, it was the Brook shit when you were younger. Oh, Jesus. What's the most yeah. harm you've done? I thought I could this road right <laughs> Ah, you're not getting away with this one. You have to go there. We all make oh mistakes. Jesus. You must have fucked up something. How many, how many hours have you? <laughs> you just tell me the worst one and that's all I need to know. <laughs> we'll work backwards. We, yeah. We had a few. We had a few, though. No. Um, oh, Jesus. We had a few. I mean one now that's your fault. <laughs> just you. Oh, they were all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want this in the podcast. I don't think <laughs> was, was it like uh, when when I was a young lad, I turned over a forwarder, right? And how did I do it? Right. So you know how a forwarder works. Yeah. They're not very fast, right? <laughs> Top speed, 23 or 4 kilometers an hour. That's not very fast. And I'm getting out timber. I'm working for a lad down the country, down around Tipperary. And all I have to do is take off the tracks, put them on the bunk, put the diesel tank, on the bunk and drive to the next wood mm-hmm. on the wood rod. Yeah. And I was told, don't put it into high gear because sometimes they get locked in high gear. Okay. And I put it into high gear. <laughs> of course. And I I've said, driven them down a forest like in the, yeah. <laughs> so in high gear, flat out, right? <laughs> right? Going like a whore and then I get to a hill and it started going faster down the hill. So I'm going, this is great. I'm going to be no length now. But you're steering with a little toggle switch. Yes. And David got into a speed wobble. Oh, and David went into the ditch. And you know the way they're articulated. Mm-hmm. So in the weirdest scenario ever, I turned over just the tractor. Right? Unheard of. You'd never see that happening. And I got out. I was broke up and shy. Mm-hmm. I got fucking ankle. I was broke up. And I get out. And I go, All right, I have to ring the boss. And I ring... I go, I'm after turning over the forward. Oh, for fuck's sake, how the fuck did you do that? How did I, I had done it anyway. And I said, bad. No, no, it's not bad. Just the tractor. And like, he's never heard of a tractor being turned <laughs> over before. The tractor part. And he goes, how did you do that? And I was there. I, just, I, I don't know. I just done it. So he comes out. I'm embarrassed. I'm sore. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job. And he's just standing there. He's looking at it. And he says, I, I never thought I'd say this. But I, pure speed. Pure speed. <laughs> Pure speed. I don't know he does 22 miles an hour. <laughs> so we all fuck up. I've done something similar with a dumper. That's the so articulated ones? Yeah. yeah. They're cunt when they speed wobble, aren't mm. they? You can never get them back mm. because you don't have a steer. So. Well, it, w- it was more when it was tipped, but yeah, the, uh, the tractor went over. And <laughs> Did the tractor go over as well? Yeah, yeah. Must have been a big dump trailer. No, like it was uh, an articulated dumper. You know, like it's... A twenty five dumper, you know, like similar oh, yeah, to yeah. similar to the to the far. Oh, do you see with them? We have them as well, yeah, yeah. Big ones. We have an A twenty five, yeah, an A twenty five Volvo, and we have a JCB seven two two. Have they good traction? They have not on grass though. They're deadly on grass. Well, I I look at them all the time and I think should they have to be spinning around the place like mad? Yeah, no, they're good. To, they're if good. you have a big weight on them mm. and you go turn, mm. they'll not push themselves. It would a bit, yeah. Uh, it would, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I suppose, I suppose the their design is is their traction is in the stockpiling. Do you know that they're backing up the heaps? Mm. You know, I suppose that's what they're designed for. But I wouldn't say they'd climb a mountain either. But uh, yeah, I spent a good bit of time on them when I was was before the trucks. I suppose. So, Dory, you love the lorries. I do. All the young lads now are going to start getting little erections now. <laughs> because I get sent a lot of lorries. I get sent a lot of lorries. Yeah. And yours, my friend, gets sent to me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you have the really nice white one that you done up. Yeah. But I get sent the black one more. I know, yeah. It's some else. This is the colour, like, I don't know. Fellas love it, like. What's your favourite lorry? Exactly that. 
No. <laughs> the one you have? I do think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Should tell everyone what it is. It's a Volvo, I think. 16, 750. Double, <sighs> double wheel tag. I'm delighted I have Dara here because I'm a Volvo man, right? And everyone you talk to is always a Scania man. Yeah. And I get it. Not a VA. Yeah. It's very appealing. It is, I suppose. Yeah. But there's something about the Volvo, isn't there? Sure, I don't know. I have a soft spot for them anyway. I do too. I have a hard spot for them as well. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you may stick that in. Is that working now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Matt, Matt probably doesn't know a thing about Larry, do you? <laughs> Not a fucking Not a fucking thing. Man. He's sitting there going, what the fuck? I, I just, I can't that. understand why there's so many numbers after the name. <laughs> he, he was, he was very last with the sailor champs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've went to a, a few car shows with Bob and that. Yeah, yeah. Right. If you go to there, they've got nothing on trucks. Yeah. You could go to a car show and see the nicest car with a heap of stuff spent on it. And mm. it would only be a drop in the ocean yeah. of what lads would spend on a lorry. Well, I'd say straight up, I used to work for uh, my cold storage factory in town here. And uh, the lorries used to come in. I got, I had got talked to a few drivers one day, like, and I was fucking stunned by the technology inside them, the comfort inside them. Like it, when it, when people look at them, they don't see the actual in like inside parts or mm. whatever. And the, like there is amazing things in it. I'm sure people live their lives in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Sure, this is it. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Do you know, you definitely, if you know, if you're expecting you led to s- stay out in them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? In fairness, or like definitely a little bit of spec goes a long way to, to keeping a driver happy too and keep, you know, keeping the lead fresh and, do you know, um, I was talking to a guy now today and he has just received a brand new Volvo. You know, and he would say like he saw, you know, you know, not fatigued, I suppose, you know, because it's all comfortable and uh, we spec Joe's truck with dynamic steering there last year and I was telling him about it, you know, so he spec'd his truck now this year. With Tell dynamic. everyone what. Dynamic steering is <laughs> and Matt. Do you, ever, do you ever drive a Fiat Punto and it's like the city steering? Yeah, the button for the light steering. So it's that in a in a in a truck version. So it's basically it really is. Was I've seen it in a Punto years ago? Like I don't know how. It's how that. did it take the lorry so long? I know, and it's like Volvo is the only manufacturer I know that are doing it anyway. But it is class, like you know. No, when you're when when you get down to a slower speed and you're in a tight yard and you're trying to maneuver in and around the place, and the steering is just finger finger light. Yeah, it is class like. Just know? makes your life easy. Mm. And they are very comfortable. Though, do you know? And look, if you're going to come on some length, they've just ah, come on yeah. a long way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. When I was on the Barry's, I think it was it was a three forty the old Black Ridge. Was that the three forties? Three sixty. Anyway. There were 16 gears, none of them were the right ones. <laughs> <laughs> and your arm would be sore at the end of the day, yeah. trying to get gears yeah. and trying to get up and down the road. Mm. Like you'd be broke up. And then we got that first day shift. Oh, yeah. And uh, oh, it was lovely. It was gorgeous until you get stuck with it in the wood and it won't yeah, rock out of the way. Trying to rock it. And like, often when you go into the wood, and you get a load of timber, especially if it was a new road. Obviously, mm. you hadn't built the road. And uh, you'd sink in it. You'd load the load. And next thing you'd go to start off. And she'd just sunk a bit. So you'd always need to kind of rock, just rock it out. It. But no, she wouldn't rock. There was no rocking and rolling. <laughs> you're, just, you're just stuck there waiting for a pull. And so frustrating. Yeah. That's so frustrating. Yeah, tough going. Yeah. All your movements are just so sexual. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very sexual man, Mac. I, everyone knows this. She's like, I, 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 I'm peak sexuality here. Look at me. <laughs> in the prime of your <laughs> in life. In the prime of my life. Stop. I do not feel in the prime of my life. Do you feel in the prime of your life? I don't know. I suppose. You not great hair in your head. Do you reckon? You're living the life by driving around your big black limo. <laughs> <laughs> You trying to fix 150,000 problems a day. No, 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 no. Um, what's your favorite lorry? Uh, no, I know that's your favorite lorry. But yeah. the first lorry, like he spec the shit out of that new white one that you got. Yeah. I've only driven it once, I'd say. Go away. Yeah. How what? sick then is that? I've driven it twice, I'd say. Very short, short spins. How long was the process from ordering that from Volvo and being on the road as it is now? I know all this when uh, 
Kim Kim can really ask me the question, but uh, I don't know. I suppose we ordered it sometime in July. It's um, it was probably February March before it was before it was on the road, but definitely took um, it definitely took a, like it came in in probably November and it went for hydraulics, and I went for that from there to get a little bit of wiring done for work lamps. McCarthy's and then I went to John Toomey and he done a load of fabrication with the back bumper and the catwalk and bull bars and side bars and all that jazz and painting. And he done all that and uh he went from that to Longford to Ivan Ledwith, fifty wheel truck steady. And he done a little bit of an interior in it. Bit of button suede and that. That's cool. Yeah. And Matt's gonna love when I say this, but <laughs> It's just up there. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look there, <laughs> this is what we're talking about. Yeah. But it's a savage job. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Jesus, it really is. And uh, I suppose the fact that it's a flat cab, we've got two flat cabs, but, you know. Had you a vision yeah. for that lorry when you were buying it? Yeah. And did yeah. that all come out of your head? Yeah, and Joe's now as well, in fairness, Joe, like, because I suppose he drove a more standard flat cab for us and we kind of tweaked her as well. So we kind of want, she was probably the, the foundation of the plan. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I suppose anyone that is going to spend or invest that kind of money in, in a yoke, they'll go for the big cab and the big truck or whatever. And I suppose it's not, it's not as common seeing, uh, we just, I suppose we want it to be different as opposed to we want to. No, it's beautiful. You yeah. take, you take pride <coughs> in your gear. Uh, definitely. Yeah. All yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, um, no, definitely. Like back to keeping the air tidy, you know, when we were small and that, like, diff- and having stuff, everyone has his own parking space. And look, I suppose you, you get out of, you get out of machinery what you put into them too. And sure, like, if you don't respect them or if you don't keep them in out of the rain and if you don't service them, sure, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get the service when you want it, you know. So we do like to think we, Try your best to look after stuff as best we can. You kind of have a little bit of a name got though. You know, young lads love you. You kind of have a little thing yeah. going, don't you? Yeah. I don't know. I suppose. Look, I suppose. Likes a, likes a grassman and likes a John Anderson done a DVD with us back in 2014, I think. Do you know, so I suppose. And, and I, I started a Facebook page for the company. And. You know, you've you've got these these guys coming up. Sh- Sean Og there with Matthew in photography. He done a DVD with us, and Keen when he was with like when he was running his own like reality um YouTube, and he done a few videos with us. So you know, I suppose that that all probably brought it along. You know, and I suppose you know we try and we try and put the best. Look, I suppose you're trying to put the best image out there and, and attract more people to it and, you know, try and keep a good vibe on the whole thing, you know, because there's too much negativity out there too, you know. We try and, uh, try and paint the best light on it. And What do you find is the most negative? <sighs> oh, sure, look, every fella's just making, you know, you just want to just put the head down and drive on and look, no one's going to make, become a millionaire, I don't think, out of what they do, out of what we do, I don't know, but uh, it's more of a vocation than a, than anything else, like I suppose, but you know, we wouldn't be, you know, if you don't love it, I don't think you should be at it. <laughs> you know, I if you could change one thing about college, what would you change? Sure, I don't know. Look, I suppose you can be given out about the RSA and you can be given out about this and that and the other, but I suppose it levels the playing field too. And look, it makes keeps the road safer, you know, but like. Like if you're trying to get X to go up to Dublin and another fella is doing it for Y and he's not putting tires under his trailer or whatever. So look, I, I definitely think, you know, you hear it like Savosa and that and, and they're probably a lot more stricter. I don't know, but, you know, I definitely think the it kind of leveled the playing field a bit, you know, and, and if everyone has to look after their machines to a calibre, you know, it's going to be very hard for them to do it for less, you know. So I suppose that that definitely um, isn't, I, you know. Look, 
we'll be given out. We're going to be given out about something all the time, you know. But uh, is there much of a difference between the agri and the haulage? Is it just two totally different industries altogether, or have they similarities? Sure, it isn't. It isn't. I suppose you know, just probably you would say a bit more professionalism in the trucks. But we try to bring that to the tractors. So look, we try. You know, we think it probably has perfected the tractors a bit better too. You know, look, we've. No, but we've brilliant lads. Like we've, you know, we've lads that, you know, love doing what they're doing too, and they love the variety as well, and they love, you know, um, every guy's got his own tractor. We'd say, you know, and they all look after their own, and they'll wash their own, and within reason, you know, in fairness, um, they have respect for it, and a lot of the guys are customers' sons and that, you know, and we would have been cutting their side of it when they were small and whatever, you know, and. Um, we have lads that come with us just for the summer as well, and um, but I definitely think you know we have a great team of staff, and Sheila in the office as well as she, she's like she's running the show. You know, in fairness, she's brilliant, and I look. I suppose you get out of staff what you give as well. You know, and we like to think they 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 get treated with respect and that as well. You know, and we treat them as well as we can and. You get it back, I suppose, you know. Plus, like, you're a big business and you have a lot of gears in that clock. Yeah. And when people go work for you, you're doing as much work as all the rest of them. Yeah, well, look, we certainly wouldn't ask anyone to do anything that we wouldn't do ourselves, I suppose, mm-hmm. is, is, is one way to put that. Um, And look, I suppose, our trump card, I suppose, is that as a family, we do pull together, you know, as best we can. And um, I suppose there's always someone of us not too far away from any job. And I'd like to think the staff work better when there's one of us closer, you know, because we're working with them. We're not running around checking up on them, but we're working with them, you know. And they'll work, they'll work way better when, they're with, when you're with them too, I think, you know. Um, yeah, so like, Mihal would orchestrate probably a lot of the diggers more so than myself, but we would possibly be shifting them then, so I suppose we're involved as well, you know, and Sean doesn't drive the Arctics, but he drives the Ridgets. So we've got a beaver tail truck, so he would shift probably when the Arctics are away and busy, he would shift a lot of the smaller plant machines with the beaver tail truck. And um, Is there anything you'd like to get into? I don't know, I suppose. Like, have you enough now? Die. Get rid of a few things. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I suppose you're always trying to push towards better work and I suppose better paying work and work that look to have a better quality life. Work that you're not gonna be out day and night for maybe all your life and here's a good one. Yeah. What do you call a uh, good quality of life? So if I was to give you the perfect life in five years. Be home for six. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. Yeah. That's all anyone that, see, when you're into lorries, mm. you love your job. Yeah. You just don't want to be doing it all day long. Yeah. You just want to get home at a time. Yeah. But it's it's almost not possible. It's tough. Yeah. It's definitely tough. And I suppose we're so local to the work we do, I suppose. Like we could often come home for lunch and, and go again, you know. Or I could come home for a sandwich in the middle of the day and not be back to later then, you know, but um You've had a lot of drivers work for you over the years. Yeah. So you'd be talking to a lot of young lads. Mm. What defines a good young lad? If you were to give some young lads advice, what would you give him? What would you tell him? What would you say to him? Dad, stand to him. Sure look, you know, respect respect demand that's implying yeah i suppose you know that there has to be a bit of respect between you know there there's there's too much entitlement you know not not in our own camp i don't think to be fair no we're very lucky with with lads but that was a missed opportunity he says except for johnny yeah yeah. except except for johnny no johnny (laughs) 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 sound but uh um you know you know, I'd often be talking to other hauliers and hauliers would be advertising for drivers. Look, I suppose we, we don't have 
a giant fleet, you know, like we, you know, we have a small number of trucks in the scale of things, but, you know, you're talking to lads that might be running 20 or 50 trucks and like they'd have a bigger turnover of staff and you have lads are ringing up looking for a job and the first question they ask is, how much are you paying? And look, it's very important, obviously, but like, you know, way back when, you got a job and you proved your worth, you know. Before you, you started know barking I mean? for you, money. Yeah, you know, and look, every fellow deserves to be paid and be paid well if they're, if they're good at what to do, do you know what I mean? And we totally agree with that. But, you know, there's guys out there like, just fucking hell, they just fucking couldn't drive us off my finger. <laughs> no. But like I used to be told when we were younger, you wouldn't drive your finger up your hole. <laughs> But yeah, look, there's lots of brilliant lads out there as well. And there's lots of lads that are really devoted to the gig. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Do you ever <laughs> come in and go, I'm the fucking best driver ever again, just drive it into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it. Stop. Well, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you backed out with that one fairly quick. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Yeah, so uh, that's 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 mad. Mam, mam as well. Mam is. Uh, Does your mother drive? Mam doesn't drive. No, mam, mam cooks. Ah oh, fuck! I I ma'am. thought you were gonna tell me your mother drives the mower or something. <laughs> mam is brilliant. No, she she drives. Um, ah, she's been, she was nursing all her life. She's retired now, but she, like, we've got an app on our phone and our customer base is on it. So we log in in the morning or in the evening, and we we. We were with Dave Cuddy today and we were drawing timber from we shifted his forwarder and we took it from A to B and we sync it and the information goes back to the office. But look, it mightn't happen all the time. Do you remember yeah. the first time I met you? Uh, Waterford. No. Where? It was down in Galway. Years ago. You were moving the machine for a lad I worked for. Fuck off. Early in the morning, around Bula. Was the trailer brand new? Yeah, the trailer was brand new. Out the box? Yeah. That was 2015. Yeah, there you go. That's way to go, isn't it? I picked up that trailer. I left home and I drove from that to Kerry and I dropped my old trailer and I picked that trailer up. And I was so worried about whether the lads would have chains in the forward or, or tracks. Not. Tracks and uh, yeah. And uh, I do loads of rubber and everything for fear they'd mark the new paint. And uh, I drove from that to Galway and picked up that forward. Jeez, I never knew you that time. Yeah, I never, that, that I never noticed that, that. I never clicked on that. I was really fat. And um, <laughs> you know, you uh, I wasn't looking my best. It was yeah. early in the morning. You said, God, he's one cool cut. Yeah, yeah. I was there. Well, I was there. That's a fucking nice lorry for one. And it was brand new and trailer. So that sticks in your mind. was brand new, yeah. Brand yeah. new. Because I was there. Jesus, that trailer's fairly fucking clean. He was like, fucking brand new. <laughs> Only after clicking it. And I was there. Yes, the tracks and everything on the fucking machine. The David's fulfilled his Tra- dream of me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this, you recognise them. This is the bit that you're going to hate. Oh, Jesus. Right? But it's just something I do. Mm-hmm. And you have no choice but answer. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some I made up earlier. <laughs> right. Are you ready? Some of these are deep, but they're good. Uh, what's your first vivid childhood memory? Please say crash the tractor. Please say crash the tractor. Please say break the mower. Childhood memory. Climbing out of the playpen in the sitting room. They couldn't keep me inside enough. Really? Yeah, I remember that. You were able to get out? Yeah. Did you go through the bars or go over? Over. over. Bang on the floor? I think I climbed up onto the... Um, because their house is old, so the 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 window sills are like fucking six feet deep because the walls are six feet <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. wide. You know, yeah, I got out of the playpen up onto the window. Der Hood, Houdini. Oh, yeah, that, that's what they call <laughs> it. Uh, if you could make one phone call to heaven, who would you call? Do you know? I often, like, you'd go to a lot of funerals, and I think we've been blessed that Touchwood, we haven't had a lot of close family funerals, Touchwood. Jeez, I don't know. I don't really know. Well, while I'm on the subject, when we, when my dad died, mm. we were sitting, chatting in the kitchen, me, Dara, Barry, and a few of us, and we just said, jeez, Dad never got to drive the 16. It was the only lorry he never got to go on. And every time we got a lorry, mm. he would be drive it. out 
un- it was, he was a lorry guy mm. and he's Volvo mad. Mm. And we were like, oh, he never got to go on it. And Dara said, just I think, just if we could get him on the back of the the, the Arctic, it, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be great? And then Dara said, I think, I think Dar or Don had known someone. I think they had that on the back of Larry. Mm. And I rang Don that night. He rang you. Yep. And you came up the next day with it. Yeah. And I just, I appreciate it so much. You, you, you met it for us. Like it was, it was brilliant. It was really Don, nice. Here. Don rang. There was actually an, another, um, a friend of mine's dead uh, passed and he wanted, he wanted to do the similar. So, um, I I knew our local our local um um Jesus. uh funeral director. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Robert Gabriel. No brother. And I knew he had it's basically the the floor of an old horse yeah. that he kept, and. Because you need the rollers, like and it needs, Dude, and, and it needs to be graceful, do you know. Yeah. So, I got that, or uh, um, Tony got done that for his dad's funeral, and um, Tony rang me because he, I had actually, uh, asked, uh, because Tony had asked me to, to organize a guard of honor for the funeral, so I asked the Lord of Truck Drivers to come on, and there was loads of trucks came, for this guy's funeral. Connie and Don came down as well. So Donny was at the Guard of Honor with me and along with loads more. And so he, maybe Dara, made the connection there. So Dara, Don knew I was involved with the Guard of Honor. So he rang me and Don was saying, if I brought it to Cork and he'd meet me and he'd bring it to Cashel and Breeden would come down and meet him and I said, you know what, no, it was Saturday evening and I rang Robert Gabriel anyway, which was the first port to call to collect it. And Don was away that weekend. I said, you know what, no, cat's away and I'll just tip on up the road a bit and it won't be like a Chinese whisper up the road. Mm. And I just dropped it, just dropped up. So I don't know, was it maybe your air coat? I think so. it was me. Was it you? Yeah. The text you? Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. It was uh, it was brilliant. It was the last thing it was the last thing you needed to be trying to orchestrate. Well it's still though, there's not many to do it. Yeah. You know. Uh would you like yourself if you met yourself? I think so. <laughs> you don't look in the mirror, some even got you I'm a tick prick. <laughs> oh, s- <laughs> <laughs> oh I, some was, days. I was mean today. <laughs> <laughs> if your life was a movie, which scene would you play over and over and over? Don't you dare say your wedding. <laughs> My wedding. That day. goes uh, without saying. Well, other than that, nice save, David. Uh, I don't know. I suppose. Do you know we've we've moved some kind of really cool loads over the years. So do you know what's the coolest load you ever moved? What big massive boilers in from Scotland and. We've shifted fifty ton tickers. Are we doing regular enough now? But you know, that's uh, that's cool. Like we escort loads, and I like that kind of work. You know, yeah, they, they are cool. Yeah. They're stuff that everyone should be filming every day. Mm. Uh, if you had, to, if you had to ask one person a question and they had to answer truthfully, who and what would you ask? Oh, These are really tough. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody said if, this. if you've been honest or not. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been honest or not though can I drive the ge- jeep for the cannonball can you drive what your jeep for the cannonball that's fucking sure no <laughs> 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 that's the simple answer to that uh, who brings you the most happiness in your life my wife oh god <laughs> someone is definitely getting it when yeah. this goes out uh, do you think this do you think things happen for a reason or do we find reasons after things happen Ooh, that's a good one. A guy said to me last week, he said, it's easier to ask for forgiveness, forgiveness than for mercy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so does that answer that? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you were always destined to do what you're doing? I think so. I just think it's, it came second nature. Like we just, I want, that's what I want to Are do. Are you going to expand the haulage end of it? Um, 
If you got the right work, you would anyway. Right. But I'd, I'd put it on the table to buy any type of truck or trailer or machine if it was feasible. You remember was balls, a, and that's what I like about you. I like balls. If there was a living to be made from other... Do you believe in God? I do. I go to Mass. The odd Sunday, anyway. Not every Sunday, but I do. Um, do you trust anyone with your life? I trust my wife with my life. I trust my family, I suppose. I don't think there's... Are you friends with your brothers? Would you count them as your friends? Yeah, look, we're close. Like, you know, we'll... If we're gone somewhere for a spin of a Sunday and we're on our way back the way, we'll, we'll pop into one of them for the for the day or something on the way back. Does, tr- does business get in the way? Do you have to at the weekend go, oh, look, just don't. I don't want to talk about yeah. all that. Yeah, I would definitely look, as I said earlier on, look, it's our trump card, I suppose. Look, it would not work, like, if we didn't pull together, do you know? And I definitely think that, like, it just could not work. And there's no way... One man with whatever staff could orchestrate, I think, anyway, what we do, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you have a lot I, of moving parts. Look, I definitely think, you know, we all have our own, you know, we bring our own thing to the table and we all have our good points and I suppose we all have our strengths and weaknesses and we kind of do, like, there's no point to I doing something that, I'm trying to fix something that I can't fix or there's no point, Sean, you know, Driving an Arctic, maybe that he can't drive, or there's no point. Sean driving the big M that he can't drive if me, you know, me mm. drives the big M. So we got a new big M this year. I think it's like our sixth or seventh. That's more, man. Just in case you're wondering. It's like a, it's like a giant lawnmower. It is. It, that's exactly what it is. A giant, mm. massive lawnmower. Like a oh, fair right. amount of Google into it after <laughs> this. <laughs> what would you like to be remembered for when you die? And what would you like people to have say about to say about you? I'd like to think they thought I was a nice guy, you know. Eh? I'd like to think, and I, I even, you know, kind of tried to get our drivers to portray that, you know, be polite, and be courteous, and be friendly, you know. And I'd like to think we are all there as a family, to all of our customers and anyone we meet along the way. Well, I think friends. you're a nice lad. Thanks. I've yes. never ever. I tried to be. I've never ever walked away from you thinking that's a prick. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, have. Um, I don't know. I don't know, I suppose it's, I think it's a good trade for anyone, you know, just when you go in anywhere with a load or whatever, you know, a little bit of politeness. Now, you probably, you didn't want me to do this now, but I, I'm just going to do it anyway, because <laughs> it's just what I do. Don't do but it. you're after, because a lot of people were always coming up to you and asking you to do shorts and jumpers and jackets uh, and stuff. Yeah. So, and I probably pushed you a little bit to try and do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Because if people do look, it, there's no issue. But there's people looking. <laughs> it's, a pe- it's a piece of piss. It's a piece of piss. Well, it's not, isn't it? Not? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. Um, Fuck you, you David. You, you, have your, <laughs> you have your own online shop now. We do. We do. Uh, look, I suppose uh, we definitely are, you know, I suppose with the Facebook and with the, the, the branding and the gear and that, you know, we I suppose we have created a little bit of a brand, Damon O'Brien. His 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 company is Sign Spec, and he he makes other stickers for for all our machines and that. No, they're not stickers like mine. They're not. No, no. no. <laughs> they're definitely not stickers like yours. <laughs> <laughs> These are good family friendly stickers that kids of all ages love to have. Yeah. So, I suppose when we had been sign writing vehicles earlier in the time, the phone numbers and it was freaking, you know, many crests and there was stripes and there was. This and that and the other and then I, s- I said, look, I, I'd like to make it try and make a logo, mm. you know, and like the initials are T O M, so you know we didn't we didn't want to be known as Tom Hollage <laughs> <laughs> or Tom <laughs> Tom the Silage Man. Everybody was asking <laughs> who the fuck Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, never met Tom before, <laughs> so you know we wanted to uh, you know use the T to do the T. T-O-M. So anyway, we drew up loads of different little bits. And Sean, Sean's actually good at drawing the brother. And he drew loads of different ones. And in fairness, they were all good enough. But we felt they were a little busy. We wanted something kind of clean and simple. And me and Damien O'Brien came up with this. So Matt's going to love this. There it is there. <laughs> <laughs> there it is there. <laughs> so, and the four stripes, I suppose, are the four sons. And they say kind of. That's cool. Yeah, so... Um, 
I suppose we branded the vehicles with that then going forward, you know. And, um, you know, we would have customers coming up and saying, did want, you know, is there any hope you'd get a few T-shirts made for us for the kids for Santy and that? And Santy's real, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, so, um, you know, and, and for gifts and that. And, you know, to be fair, we try not to let anyone down and we, you know, we would be making, getting stuff made for staff and that from time to time. So to be a big scatter to try and get a, get a few t-shirts made, begging people in the first week of November. Yeah, it's a bit late. <laughs> or the last week of November, maybe, you know, and we've got it, <laughs> we've got them in fairness. People have pulled it out of the bag, but, you know, look, we were not, not expecting to be Dave Cuddy level now or anything, <laughs> but, uh. You uh, can be, everyone has their own little place and there's room for everyone. Yeah, so. I, I can see it though. I know, I get it. If mm. you're a child, mm. right, and you're a farmer's son, or if you're into tractors, or if you aspire to be a farmer's jockey, right, and you're there, and next thing this setup rolls in, big ends, big tractors. For a young lad, it's like Christmas. Mm. Like they're freaking out over it. Like it's their dream. It's like when I see a sports car, and I see a, I see a Porsche, or I see a Lamborghini. Yeah. I, I lose all running myself. Yeah. And it's the same thing. It is a serious buzz though. She's like, you know, the few weekends that we put out the second outfit. And like I was saying earlier, there's some orchestration in it because, you know, it's great to say you put out a second outfit, but you need to have enough silage mode in front of the two harvesters then. So like, and, and then you can't, so if Tony has a long draw, which is 10 kilometers down the road, you know, you need all of your trailers to be with that hamster yeah. in. So that like it's an exponential problem. The more you try to solve one end of it, the other end starts getting yeah, bigger. But it actually worked really well because we, like we said, uh, Friday evening we had short draws. So I was able to have three trailers and Dad had five trailers. And then Saturday we went into a really big customer and we were able to have the two hamsters, the two loaders and eight trailers or nine trailers. You know, And mm. it, it, it did work. It did go really well. I do, you know, it was, and it was, a, it was definitely a serious asset, and it definitely took a lot of pressure off of Tony, you know, even in the head. But you're like, digressing. Hmm? Everyone wants to know what you have on the shop. Oh, sorry. So sorry. what do you, what can we buy in the shop? I've already got two t- two uh, uh, polos. Uh, or are uh, savage. Ask the wife. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So we've got um, she's them Chile body warmers. Are freaking flying, the fellas love them, yeah. So, we've got them and we've got different color polos, and we've got kids' size polos and pink ones for the girls, pink and to make the boys wink, yeah. And, and some of the girls, what's the website called? Shop.tonyomani.ie. Tonyomani.ie. And if you want any cool stuff, go on to tonyomani.ie. The link will be there. <laughs> In the, in, the, in the description I'm going to wrap Matt's hole now in the next while doing stuff like this because I see him doing it on YouTube videos yeah, now yeah. and I'm just going to do it and then sometimes I go it's just here <laughs> it's just there yeah he's not, you're not even going to pick the same no, mess no, all the just time. Get to move I, I'm only just after realising this joke no because you were <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah so he's got to put in yeah, yeah he's going to super in and I'm actually I'm looking at these I'm looking at stuff online here it's gorgeous yeah so yeah. Oh, the body warmers are lovely in the high vis, yeah. Yeah, we got the high vis jackets. So, I absolutely the, the way that, you came on, and that's the big black 750 there. Yeah, oh. Don, oh, hey, look yeah, at that. Yeah, see, see that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, th- they're the Lamborghinis of the Lurry World. Yeah. It actually it looks like they're, it, the, it they're the Porsches of the Lurry World. She's a fair load front, isn't it? Oh, yeah, on air. They're all bagged. <laughs> bagged. <laughs> 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 Who put the fucking caddy in the middle of all of it? That's the hey, hey, fair hey, caddy. Hey, 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 hey geez, hey. don't mess with the boys' we bands. Got, we got a small, t- we got a <laughs> soft spot for that. He caddy. loves the caddies. <laughs> yeah. But, um, there, thanks a million for coming on. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, I hope you're a little bit less anxious about the whole thing. I know you're a little <laughs> bit nervous coming on. I uh, know, we're not too bad. We're not too bad. But, um, yeah, thanks a million. Thank you. And best of luck in the future. Oh, hey, I must mention Don, uh, Don actually. Fuck Don. I, I, I don't know, I'll have to mention that. He had his time. Tell Don to open that fucking restaurant. I asked Don, oh yes. <laughs> I asked Don last week, I said, have you any advice for me? And he said, wear a nice t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether that means he I always it. look shy. 
He said, wear nice shorts. He, but I, I wore a t-shirt. I think you it's a nice... Own. One. Yeah, you I think it's own. nice. A Tony O'Matney t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don fully came in like he was dressed for a night out. Which I thought he did do. He, he, he was ready for a night out. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks a million. Thank you. Take care. And I'll see you all next week, everyone. Good luck. Good luck.